My name is Emeka, AKA Mecca Dom. About eight months ago, I left my prestigious job in corporate America to pursue my dream in hip hop. God spoke to me and I listened. Money's not flowing the same, so now I gotta hustle. Mecca Dom, Mecca Dom, Mecca Dom, Mecca Dom. Let's go. I'm running all day long. You hiding? I see it. I'm coming. Believe it. Hey, the bed. Hey, the bed. Hey, the bed. What you doing, man? Hey, the bed. Hey, the bed. What you saying, man? You wanna beat me? Understand it, baby. Come along. Ride with the business, man. They call me Mr. Mechadon. Fitting the door. Fitting the door. Oh, shit. Fitting the door. I think it's time I need to uh -huh. My name's Emeka, also known as Mecca Don. I'm 26 years old from Columbus, Ohio. But now I live in New York City and I'm doing it big. About eight months ago, I was working uh, as a lawyer in the top 10 law firm. I didn't feel like I was serving the purpose that I was supposed to serve on this earth. It was a tough, tough decision. I can be a lawyer for the rest of my life. But now is the time. Hip hop is at a state that it needs influence, positive people to come in and change it, but still keep it cool and still keep it hip. I'm ready to grind and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to let people know who I am, to let people hear my music. And I'm gonna be in it for the long haul. People disrespecting me and hating on me and Saying why you're on crazy, that's not gonna deter me from doing what it is that I'm here to do. Now is the time to hustle. It's time to hustle. We're hustling now. <laughs> Make way I'm coming in lawyer, but I'm still hustling. boys at R&B Live at Spotlight Live in Times Square. Lazy Boys are consists of two different producers. The first guy is Jacob. Jacob's a real cool laid-back guy. He uh, I think he's an engineer. And um, but he loves music, so and he has a lot of talent. Let's listen to some beats. Um, hopefully, come up with something, some new hot stuff. Get some stuff recorded. When we first went into the studio, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I brought some of my lyrics um, just in case they would match some of the beats that they had, and uh, I was hoping that I would find some stuff that I liked. You know, we were in there for a while and Jacob was playing beats. And for the first few beats that he was playing, you know, I, was, I wasn't really feeling them that much. And uh, it kind of started getting me a little anxious. Uh, they're mostly like R&B and pop type stuff, which is, which is what they do for the most part. And V, you know, he was over there chilling. And, um, you know, he kind of felt the same way. I could tell he felt a little anxious. And, But luckily the game was on in the studio, <laughs> so we had something to kind of take our minds off it, at least, you know, temporarily. There you go. Hey, Thomas Jones. Finally, Jacob came with some beats that were real hot, and uh, that was good, because we, we felt like we had something to work with, and, and we did. There was one beat that they had that was real hot, and it worked really well with something that I had already written down. 
Um, so we worked with that. The second guy in the Lazy Boys is Steve. What's going on though? It looks good. He's been in the hip-hop game for a long time. Everything had just about its run, because Reggae Tone came in, smashed it for a little bit. Reggae came in, smashed it for a little bit. And now, down south, it's just some raps. Steve is really opinionated. I mean, really opinionated. People are saying that down south shit is hip-hop. It's really not hip-hop. It's never been hip-hop. You know, urban market really don't support artists like that unless they feel like the album is really worth that. There's a difference between hip hop that started in New York, you know what I mean, and down south music that's crunk and dance music. 50 and Kanye, like, I wasn't sold on the whole beef shit. Like, He's been doing this for a long time, so he knows a lot about the industry. So I, I listen to what he says. I think a lot of what he says has a lot of value. Like, I bought Jagged Edge's last single, last album. Shit was garbage. I was pissed. You understand? Matter of fact, Jagged Edge, you owe me eight dollars. Everything turned out good, so I think it's gonna end up being a, a pretty good relationship. And I was able to record some stuff. Believe in your boy, make the dawn the American dream. I've seen the team who's getting that cream. Shout out to my nigga Mitchell in a bit for the green. But my I'm really glad that they ended up working with us because um, their beats are hot, <laughs> hot. <laughs> so you'll hear some stuff from me and them again. I guarantee. I'm the American dream. Right now we're meeting with Bobby George. He's one of our business associates. He does a lot of business. Him and his family, they do a lot of business here in Cleveland. We flew to Cleveland to talk to Bobby. Uh, Bobby's one of our business partners that we are working on some deals with. Doctor, are you serious? Bobby George is Troy Smith's business manager. We actually met him through Troy and then it turned into a business relationship from there. He'll clean up the agreements. He'll give them the, you read them approval. Okay. We've worked on a couple deals with Bobby, and you know, he's a really cool cat. I actually like him as a person, and he's also a very, very good businessman. We've learned a lot from him. You get 5% of my 100% of my, okay. you know, of my shit. Okay. The so deal that we were working on is an oil deal, and basically a conglomerate of people in Texas and Oklahoma were looking for investors to help them in a drilling project. So that's what we came in was to help bring in money. So he's willing to give us the same deal for a lender and not and, and as opposed to an investor. We know cool. people with money. Yeah. Private equity banks to investment firms to athletes to private investors. So where we come in was the opportunity to raise money for that deal. Uh, the deal itself was $12 million and then you know we, we were in the process of negotiating what our brokerage fee would be. Is there is there a payment schedule? Payment schedule in the contract? In the business plan, there's something here. In the actual contract. In the interest of confidentiality, there's certain things that I can't divulge about the agreement. When, how often do we get paid our residuals? Every month. Is that in the contract? You know, for us, although this is business and legitimate business, it's, it's still a hustle. You know, you still got to hustle to get individuals together. Uh, you got to hustle to get, you know, the investors. You got to hustle to get the deals in front of your desk. Uh, it's a hustle. And there's a lot of money that can be made, but it's still us. But this is what we do. This is what we do on a day to day basis. I be getting cake from doing deals like oil. oil, 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 oil. It's all about pushing the right triggers and getting people to react. We want to start moving, you know? Mm -hmm creating opportunities for everybody and start making money. Real, real, big, ugly, baby, ugly.